Hi Flosstube, this is Barb with Lost and Floss. This channel is primarily about cross-stitch, but there's bound to be some other things thrown in, especially today. I definitely have something else. Uh, uh, let's see, video, have no clue. Um, can't believe it's September already. It's like, I don't know where the summer goes to. It always flies by. We had a nice week at the cabin. Um, the Labor Day weekend, we had our daughter and her four kids and her husband and my son, his dog and girlfriend. I should say girlfriend and dog. <laughs> um, yeah, so they just came for one night, but it still was so fun to have everyone in the family together. The kids are getting older, so they've all transitioned to the upstairs, which is kind of, it's not open to the bottom, but it's like one lofted area. So we've just got a bunch of beds up there and other men, they were getting up at four in the morning because I guess they were allowed to play on their device, their screens, I guess is what they called them, um, when they got up in the morning so they'd stay quiet for the other people. So they, you know, probably would normally go back to bed, but a couple of them got up at four o'clock the one day. So uh, my daughter put the kibosh on that and said, you need to sleep a little bit later. But we had fun. We went to a little local festival. Um, just, you know, they had rides on the ATV. We um went for ice cream which is you know always one of the must do activities and the the last night the sky was just phenomenal i just don't even know how to describe it it was there was no moon and so there was this beam of light that started out going like this and slowly went more like this and shooting stars it it was phenomenal so our granddaughter just had a surprise trip to New York with her dad and they had seen Starry Nights and she's like, this is, this is even better than Starry Nights. So I thought, oh, it's kind of nice, you know, nature can trump everything, that's for sure. So um, what else? Um, so we spent a week up there, um, started out very hot transitioned into like I had to shut the door in the morning it was a little bit chilly so I will take that any day uh what else some um, just we've had uh, fun things with you know taking the great the aunts took the great um older college bound great niece and nephew out for lunch one day before they left for their schools uh we had a get together with our friends, um, my morning walking group that normally, well, the husbands don't walk with us. And so a couple times a year, we've transitioned into including them in a, a you know, dinner or casual dinner on the patio, that sort of thing. So it's kind of fun. And um trying to think what else. Uh, I don't know. It's just, I can't, you know, I always say I can't believe it's September, but it's just flying, flying away. So trying to get out a few of my fall decorations. Um, as you can see, those won't stay there, but I just pulled them out of the closet. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll set something up for you to look at in the background. And um, my mess here is in regards to Sampler September, I probably have five or six things. I, I I might just start a little bit of everything because if you've watched my channel, you know that I usually do finish things. Very rarely do I have, I, so far I know of two things I can mention that I just gave up on. But for the most part, I, I do like to finish my things. So I, you know, I don't know if that'll happen or not. They're all kitted up. Um, 
got some good ones. I think I've probably showed them to you in the past, but they kind of span the, the globe. And I probably, if they show through my thing, I won't take them out. But a Happy Life Sampler, la di da um, I got the kit for this one. Old Christmas tree, Sampler's Not Forgotten from Country Sampler a couple years ago. I have At Home by With Thy Needle and Thread. This is my working copy. Love this one. So that one definitely I will be starting. What else do we have? So that's three. Oh, we got Teresa Colgate. <laughs> she gets me into trouble here. Um, I've always liked land that I love. And I can't remember who gave me this chart, but I'm like, I'm going to take that because I love that one. Scarlet House, A Changed World. Love this one, too. I mean, there's just so many beautiful things to stitch. There's another Teresa Kogut, and this one is Come to the Garden. This one I've always loved. I mean, all of these I've always loved. And then the final one is um, Cross Stitch Antiques on this fair canvas. I saw this live... Um, the one that Kathleen stitched, and it's just, it's phenomenal. It's so beautiful. So give me a floral bo uh, border in any day rather than just um, straight where you have to meet up geometrically. I kind of hate that. All right, well, let's go on to what we've been working on. Stacy Nash Primitives Gathering the Green Sampler. I'm starting to realize this one will, will not be done by this Christmas, but that's all right. Every year that I make progress on it, hmm, I wonder, I think I stitched this since the last time, but sorry if I didn't. I am. Um, Usually what I do is I put them on boards. I mean, I always am glad when I get the house done. And that gold, it's just so beautiful. So I put them on boards and then rather than writing down what I stitch, because, you know, many of you know that I'm helter-skelter all over the place, I um, just will know if it's off the board, then I know I stitched on it. <laughs> kind of makes sense, right? So, let's bring up the stocking, shall we? The Gold Collection Rooftop Santa Stocking. This was that eBay purchase, because I had to stitch this one. And I was going to do Santa's face, and then I decided instead just to keep on this page. It's kind of fun to see how, like... The chimney comes together and different parts. Just like all of a sudden, it, it gets more and more depth and more alive. So I'm to the point where like now I don't dread stitching on it. So I will keep going on it. Uh, this year was the sixth anniversary of the Lost in Floss channel. Started back in August 2018 by my friend Leanne and myself. And sadly, she's no longer with us. But um, I know she, she would have been excited to be celebrating any anniversary of the channel. So I decided I had this chart of hers. Um, just a very simple... Little House Needleworks, Home of the Needleworks 
squared. And let's see if I could find the picture. Be even better. Since this was her chart, I thought, oh, I'm going to stitch this one and just I'll put it up with my other sewing related sampler in my sewing room here. I got like the bottom half mostly done. So I think I'll be able to get this knocked out and off the whip list. So <laughs> one of my friends, um, so every year around Leanne's birthday, this year was a little off because we want to do a weekday and her birthday was on a Saturday. But um, our stitch group gathers and um, traditionally people have started new projects. And, you know, I, I know at least a couple of people did this time. And um, so one of my friends came over and she's like, well, how many whips do you have? And I'm like, I really don't know because I, I don't keep track of them and I start new things. And I, I try to work on them at least a little bit every year as I hit the season that they're in or if they're every day. But I couldn't exactly tell you. And um, I remember Anna Stichrodi used to say, keep it under 30 because there's 30 days in a month and then you could stitch on each one. Well, not 30, but some months vary. But I'm like, I was I was at 30, but I, I guess if you count like all the little Prairie Schooler Santas I have started, I mean, I think I have six of those right off the bat. So, I don't know. It's, you know, I just keep going. <laughs> I There's things that I like, and if I start them, then I know I'll finish them. So that's the way I look at it. It's not anything to be ashamed of. So I did almost get this guy done. Last time I was in a conundrum over how I should um, like add the webbing to his snowshoes. But then I realized I was doing it like every square instead of every other square. And so now I have the top one done and I like how that looks. So hopefully by next video, this guy will be done. The one night I just was like having fun stitching on these, so I kept kept going. So I think I've made progress on most of them. We have the Ark, um, Caroline Santa. I know I worked on, and this guy, he's a sled. This is like a patriot guy, patriot guy. And then I definitely worked on 2024. I saw someone, oops, who had it done and I'm like, oh gosh, I need to at least give him a face. So, and once I haul them out, I just like to kind of keep going on them. So the years that those are, are 2011, 2008, 2002, 1998, 2024, and 2014. And then later this fall, we're going to Portugal. So I'm going to take this along and I need to decide which one I should do. And I think there's one with the fish, and I guess fish cuisine is very big there. Um, otherwise, let's see. This one has a real map. So I think that one probably is a uh, for sure. Then I was thinking, hmm, should I like start one in and I might do this. So we're going, we're flying out of Chicago when we go. And so that'll be going over the border. So technically I could start a new start there and then start another one once we get to Portugal. Um, coming home from up north. Oh, you know, like my 
uh, impatience were beautiful before we left the ones in the ground just gorgeous and then came back and they're like stalks without any flowers or leaves because the deer got into them which I I know my husband had a camera on the back garden and so I was prepared for it but then when you see it it's like well could you at least eat the fat stalks that's what gets me it's like don't just leave that all there. I'm having a really fun time stitching this. It's hands across the sea. Um, Florence Mary Dickinson. I'm trying to find the cover. Um, this is a, like, I'm not used to stitching this kind of, with this kind of book. So I'm adjusting to that. These colors are really, um, it's the 103 or 100.3 um, silks. This was a gift from Valerie Stitching in the Barn. So when I stitch on it, I think about her. But look how vivid those are. Just really beautiful colors. And I didn't use the call for color. I think I'm stitching this on either 36 or 40 count vintage exemplar. And I love, love the way it looks. It's really beautiful. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm just like tossing things on the ground. So I was, I had started this one a little while back. Another Teresa Kogut, Remember Me. This one spoke to me as soon as I saw it, as many of her pieces do. So I worked on the, the house a little bit. When I first started working at it, I wasn't sure that pattern was going to show up, but then the more I see of it, I think it'll be fine. And the flower, I have one going. So it's, it is fun. I probably should devote a little bit more time on this to get it so it looks more like a real item, but that's how it goes. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, this one, this little bird is from the Winds of Autumn book, and I've mentioned before, I could stitch everything in this book, and I probably will. I love, there's a sister's love, and I have four sisters, so someday I'll do that one. Well, and I'll include my sister-in-law, because she's, she's really a great sister-in-law. My family was lucky to have my brother marry her. I mean, he's, he's a, a good catch, too, but. <laughs> so this is the one that I'm working on just a little round motif and um i don't know if you can see this behind me but my thought is i'm going to just finish it in a circle and have it on the inside of that i thought that would be kind of cute so i should just finish that up so i could have a finish but the other other um, charts that I, I've stitched a couple from this book now, they're all so beautiful. With Needle and Thread by Samplers Not Forgotten. This was one I got at Country Sampler. Then I struggled with the color of the flowers and ended up using a white. I believe I'm stitching this on Antique Lace by number 12 Stitch Company. If I could find my little sheet that I, well, I'm pretty sure that's what it's. Oh, it's probably in my hand here. Um, yes, it's 40 count Antique Lace by number 12 Stitch Company with, and I'm stitching it 
kind of with the country sampler in spring green, their conversion, although I'm using more of a weight for the flowers. After, after trying to get it to show up, it really didn't show up even when I changed my color of my linen. So I'm like, I don't want to go through all that work and have it be kind of on the fence. So this is another Sampler's Not Forgotten. <laughs> Got a theme going here. Christmas in My Heart, 1843. If you see this one in person, it's just stunning. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. In all the year. Keep it all the year. Which is a very beautiful sentiment. Goes along with trying to fill the world with love. So I'm getting... <laughs> I can't see what I'm uh, talking about, but I'm getting um, fairly far on this and hopefully the lettering will go fast and I'll have this done for Christmas. It's in my beautiful bag. Linda from my stitch group made me. I think she had won one of my giveaways before we had our stitch group and or maybe before we started it up again. And she sent me that as a thank you. Santa Stops Here by Brenda Gervais. I've been wanting to stitch this. So I can't believe I did this. But I think this is vintage country mocha. No, winter brew. So I got this nice little start. Look at that. But I'm going the wrong way. So I don't know. I, you know, for sure I could make it into a pillow if I think I counted and it would end about where my thumb is here. So I don't know. I may, I may start it over <laughs> or I may just have like it tied up against the frame and call it a day. Oops. I want to try to keep, keep my things together because I have a big mess going as it is, as you can imagine. Yeah, we're kind of heavy on the Christmas, but that's okay. Dasher and Dancer Hobby House Press. Love this one. Love it, love it, love it. I'm stitching this on 40 count iron, I was going to say iron side, but that's the show. Iron stone. This is a farm girl dry good fabric. I just love this. It's kind of has a greenish tinge to it and I'm using the country sampler conversion. And I really have fun stitching on this. I think I'll be very happy to get that, <sighs> like that top border done, although the bottom one is no joke either. But you know, once, once I get the top border done, I might even start working on the tree a little bit and like maybe do a length of floss worth of letters every time I work on it but it's coming along. Definitely will not be done for this Christmas, but in the future. And then this is, this was a piece that Margot in our stitch group decided she didn't want to finish. It's the Green Coat Santa by Teresa Kogut. And at first I wasn't going to take it, and then I'm like, what the heck, he's really cute. And she had, she had enough of it done. So I keep plugging away. It is, it is a lot of stitching, but it 
and I'm sorry I don't press my stuff, but I just have too many projects. I used to sometimes, and I don't know. I think it's, it is, can be a lot of work. And not that I don't like doing work, but I'd rather be stitching. So last year at Farm Good Dry Goods, Farm Girl <laughs> Dry Goods uh, Fall Retreat, someone had done these Roveras Christmas strawberries as their exchange gift. Oh my gosh. I just, I love them. I went over by her and I'm like, I need to know. <laughs> Who that chart is by because I need to stitch them. The this kind of has a pink cast to it. It's called uh, Copper Vintage by Lakeside Linens. I think this is 36 count, if I remember correctly. Oh, it's 32. But I think I'm stitching, I don't know if I'm stitching one over two or two over two, but it's starting to look like something now. So there's there's enough colors in it. And I think that's why I don't necessarily enjoy stitching on it that much. But I should at least attempt to get one of them done for this Christmas. Now I feel like this is my phasing into adult stitching instead of doing all the cutesy stuff. This is Scarlet House Smith Sampler. I saw this at um, the stitch shop in Madison up on the wall and I'm like, oh, I need to do that. And I'm stitching this on 40 count Lakeside Linens Lentil. And I'm going to town on the border. So the left border is all done. The top is all done. And I'm working on the right. And how I'm handling it is I noticed in the, like the divider motif going across, the bottom is all the way across in on four different lines. And so I thought to keep myself from really getting off kilter, what I've been doing is like, for instance, as I went down this side, I'll get to here and then I'll look on the chart and make sure that where I am with this motif matches what's on the chart. So if I'm off, it'll only be somewhere along here that I'm off. And then I'll do the same with this section and this section. And then, well, I have to finish going across here, but I will certainly jump for joy if I get that all done. I think I'm just going to really enjoy stitching it. Because even now, I, I really like stitching on this. I'm always kind of sad when it's time to put it away. But I finally had a... I know people stitch from their iPads, but I just find it easier. I ran off all the pages and taped them together, and that works for me. Still plugging away on Plum Street Samplers this happy morning. This is a big one. But I've, I've made progress on the vine that goes around. I think this is hog bristle that I'm stitching it on. And look at that. I should stand up. It's, I really can't wait to have this one done. I should really look in my basement and see if I have any sort of a frame that'll work for this. There's one frame. I got it at Michael's for $7 and it's humongous and ornate. I think it was like a $300 frame that has a little boo-boo on it, which I'm like, I'm perfectly fine with that for $7. Oops. 
I had my silk floss from a Smith Sampler. I'm like, I know sooner or later I'll find it. Okay, here is Stacy Nash Primitives, the Be Kind Sampler. Love that floral border. And I'm stitching this on 36 count bees knees. I wasn't sure if this was showing up enough, but when I took it to the Leanne's Legacy Day, Margo and Lisa, who are both exceptional stitchers, um, just convinced me to keep going. They said, no, it'll definitely show up. You don't want it pink, pink. So that's what I'm doing. And actually, like, the flowers aren't awful to stitch on. So, I don't know, like, I, I don't like necessarily working on the borders delayed. And so, I feel like if I get some of them out of the way and know they meet up and are relatively okay, that then the inner part can just be fun stitching. Heartstring Sam 3... Someone tell me how this is pronounced. Finis Cowles Hall. And I think I filled in a little bit on the, I just have a little start. But I think I filled in a few more of the berry things. Or leaves, I don't know what they even are. I'm plugging away at this 32 count Alphabet en blanc. I'm using Icing Belsois and I don't even know what this is. It's like kind of a bluish color. 32 count. But someday, someday it'll be done. I love it, but I don't know. It's just taking time. I think I might count my whips when I'm all done. Um, Valerie Stitching with the Barn also gifted me as the Crow Flies Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. This I'm stitching on 36 count vintage pecan butter. And this is my 2024 Leanne's Legacy piece. So since she's been gone since 2020, um, each year on her birthday, I've started a piece. So in 2020, it was Winter Rose Manor. 2021, Blackbird Design, All Joys for Thine. Um, this autumn piece, I can't think of what it is was uh, 2022 and then I did another piece from the book I think it's called Harvest Moon it's like an owl and a moon and that was her handle for her individual Instagram so I thought that was fitting but this oh, this one she would have loved so this is my 2024 piece and I will get this done. I'm I'm hoping to frame it. Not sure what frame, but um, this linen is 36 count vintage pecan butter by Lakeside. I mean, if I could stitch everything on Lakeside, like many of you, that would be my choice. There, there. I shouldn't say that because there's a lot of other nice linens. It's just knowing what colors, um, if you don't see them in person, what colors will speak to you. I decided to pull out this. Um, it's a Keeping Tradition Red Sampler. And it's kind of fun. I like stitching some things with just one color. I'm using 
Jude Design Mariska's Red. It's a beautiful variegation. And I've got the little center viney thing done. I don't really think this will take, if I, if I concentrated on working on it, I don't think it would take really long to, to do this. But I just, I, I think it's going to be really simple and really pretty. So I guess that is a, a, a September, sampler September start. What else do we have here? Oh, um, so I used to be a series stitcher. In fact, I've been gathering my series peach peaches. Where'd that come from? My <laughs> series pieces um, in my son's room. I'm laying them all out on the floor right now. And I'm going to do a separate video showing you the series that I've stitched and why I've moved away from starting new series. <laughs> There's one, one new series that I keep kind of like looking at. I haven't been anywhere to see the charts yet in person, but I probably, if I do see, I think there's Christmas I like, there's Valentine's, Patriotic, and Fall. Um, just little, little pin pillows. So it wouldn't be a big commitment, but so far I've resisted. Well, this one is Prairie Schooler, The Four Seasons. And I forgot to bring up my, the one I stitched already. I've actually stitched both fall and winter, but the winter one I gifted to my brother. The fall one I have downstairs. I will show it in the, the series episode. But I have a nice little start. This is 18 count Davos, I think. Or is it Mushroom Lugana? Uh, let's see here. No, it's Putty Khaki Davos. Is, is it being 18 count? Is that what makes it Davos? So I have the roof and the little border. You know what? If I could stitch these 30 years ago, I can stitch them now. So I love that with the little sled. It's comfort stitching, right? I don't even know what the last one is here. Oh, another prairie schooler by the chimney. I have three of these sort of ones done. Oh no. Two done, and so this is my fourth. I'm using the colors that I used for the first two, which is the red is bandana and the green is desert mesquite. A headless Santa. <laughs> I was out of some of the colors, and so one day I was like going to do an online order, and then the more I thought about it, it's like I could be to my stitch shop in an hour and have all the flosses that I needed right away. Well, I don't know. I think I needed, I looked at all my projects and I probably needed um, 40, 40 different flosses. Well, because of the ones I kitted up for Sampler September. And I hadn't been in a, actual stitch shop since last late last fall so almost a year and so of course I had to look through the charts as well and this this one I knew if I saw it I was gonna buy it and you know maybe I'll want to start that this <laughs> this fall too September so this is Peace on Earth by Twin Peaks Primitives, which I, I just, when I saw this one, just loved it. 
And then, of course, they had chart marks, markdowns, or like, I think if you bought, if you bought a couple, you got one free. I can't remember anymore. But I've always wanted to stitch this American Eagle by Threadwork Primitive. And this is another one that I had on my list. American Strawberries by Prairie Schooler. And then, let's see. These were, these were marked on ones. So, um, Teresa Kogut, Let Freedom Ring, this angel. She's really cute. I've always loved this, Be of Good Cheer by Scarlet House. And I saw this cute little bloom sampler, Threadwork Primitives. This piece reminds me a lot of a wool applique that I'm going to be doing probably next year. Um, it's called Blessed Land, Tempting Tangles Designs. I, let's see, I don't know about the verse. The verse says, to the blessed land of room enough across the ocean bars. What are ocean bars? Like, I know they want it to rhyme with stars, but maybe I'll change it to across the ocean far, even though it wouldn't be plural. Where the air is full of sunlight and the flag is full of stars. I don't know. I don't really like ocean bars. <laughs> but I love this chart. Isn't that cool? I've never seen that one. Um, and after, after spending time with Roseanne doing her patriotic things, if you guys haven't seen that, it's two videos back. Just... Take a look. She has so many cool patriotic things that are different. They're not things that you see all over. And that's what this one kind of reminded me of. Now, perhaps some of you have stitched it years ago. I don't know. And then the other ones I got, um, Heartstring Samplery, All the Pretty Flowers, Live Forever in My Heart. And you know I like my flowers. And then Mary Jane's Motifs by Leela's Studio. Now I know the correct way to say the name. So then, oh, I should show you these back ones as long as I have them handy. Um, Cinnamon Stars. I can't remember, is that Plum Street? You guys have all stitched this so you know I just like set it in on a this is on a map board that I set into the frame I don't even know what was on there and then <laughs> oh my gosh this one I, I <laughs> we had Lee and I had so much fun with this when it went missing pumpkin patch um <sighs> someone told me the name I think it was a Debbie Mum inspired piece. It was in a a book or a magazine or something way back in the 80s, probably 90s, early 90s. And I had it like I had the quilt all done. I had the scarecrow mostly done. I had this tree, but it had a giant cat here. And I think that's why I start, stopped stitching it. I didn't like the cat at all and so we had an episode where Leanne ripped the cat out on well she was being recorded and there were some people who just were aghast because they really liked the cat but I think he was out of scale to the rest of the items he was way bigger than a pumpkin and I haven't seen too many cats other than oh a bobcat we had a bobcat on our trail cam up north like he looked fairly big, or she. Um, let's see if I can maybe get get that transferred over.
It was one of their autumn ones. And this is back when everybody was coffee, tea, dyeing Monaco, a la Priscilla. And so that's what I did. And this frame was just a little bit too short. So I used the Rick Rack to fill in a little bit. And I think I changed out the pumpkin. There was supposed to be maybe a house there. But I really do love this one. There's a couple others, finishes, fall finishes that I look at now and it's like, for instance, this one. I probably will take this out and do something different. I don't know. Doesn't doesn't really speak to me anymore. And also this one, I'm not sure about. I might I might see if I can find more of a a frame that would actually fit it now. You know, but that was back early stitching days where it's like you just did your best if, to find something. It's from that Blackbird book I showed. And I had this professionally framed because I really liked it. And then I lost it for a while, not <laughs> realizing it was up on my wall. In fact, one of my... One of my series, I can't find February. And it's like, I think I accidentally put it in my Valentine's tub in the basement, but I thought I went down and found that in wordplay. And now I can't find the Prairie School one. Well, that's beside the point. But this was um, an acorns one that Leanne stitched with silks. And then I made it into a drum, and I love this one. I just put like a little bit of um, like some walnuts. I, I don't know if they're real. Yeah, I think they are real. And you know, just like I didn't want to make it too frou frou-y, but it's just it's so pretty. I think this was an exclusive from. Oh, it says A and T Acorns and Threads, two thousand nineteen. So if you're lucky enough to have this in your stash, stitch it. And then we have, um, stop the This board. is Oak and Berry Wool Applique Table Runner by Tradition or Crane Design. That's what the pattern looks like. And I decided instead of spending a lot of money on wool i just used what i had in my stash and i used a piece of black flannel and i thought <laughs> i was being so smart i used fusible um like light batting but then i forgot that like the back side i just used like a piece of fabric for my stash i forgot that it wouldn't have anything on it and so then that was starting to kind of ravel a little bit as I was doing the stitching around the outside. So then I just took a little bit of glue and put it on the fabric so that it wouldn't fray and then let it dry. But I think it turned out really pretty. I love it. So now that I've shown it, I can actually put it out downstairs. And we went to a new, well, we had been there once before, the Grand Coast, um, a new ice cream shop that is in an old, like, a, it, the building is a gas station from, it's almost 100 years old. And they moved it and then kind of redid it. Well, anyways, there was a sign that said, boutique sale or something like that it was in the train people and I never even knew there was a like gifty antique place there but you know how I love my wooden shoes and you know of course everyone always asks me what are you gonna do with these well these are really huge so I'll be able to well my husband will drill a hole in them these are actually made in Holland and so that they'll have drainage and they won't rot. But they actually had a whole pair. So our granddaughter had them on and she was like dancing around. You know? 
Um, but everything, I guess they're retiring. So everything in the shop was 50% off. So I forgot I just paid a couple dollars for those. And then you never can have too many trees for your Christmas village. And this is the, the what I'm really excited about. Um, this piece is actually funny because my grandma had this picture hanging in her house showing you before. So I got to cut that out because if you'd see what's behind my tripod, oh my gosh, it's a big mess. So anyways, I love this frame and I'll put something special in here. I don't think, I know we have one of my grandma's old pictures, but I don't think I have this one. And I don't know, you know, maybe this was one that was mass produced and everybody had, I don't know. All right, so that's about does it. I am gonna film those other two, oh, in addition to my series thing, I also have been um, complimented numerous times on unique finishes that I've done over the years, you know, rather than just doing a pillow or whatever. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to put, I think I'm going to just gather like 10 of my more unusual finishes and just kind of do a speed video showing you those things just so you know to encourage you to think outside the box a little bit and not always just do the same finish or or be like if if you see something when you're out and about have your mind open to possibilities of what you can do with that thing. Like oftentimes I kind of retro create. So I'll have something I see that I can picture what the finish should be or what kind of a stitch piece should go on there. And then I'll look for the chart. So um, I think it'd be kind of fun just to show you those things and now that I'm thinking about it, I have a number of like um, things that I bought that I plan to someday use for finishing. And maybe I'll just show those and um, maybe I'll do that separate. I don't know. It's getting late. I'm mean, like, I don't know. What time is it? 5.37. I have been kind of up in, in the room like trying to get things organized for this and um yeah I can't believe where the day has gone but it's flown by so I probably would like to get this wrapped up so I can go downstairs besides that the Packer first game of the season is on tonight they're in Brazil so um I kind of want to see that so anyways um I guess I'll be back with those other um, videos. I got um, on our Leanne's Legacy Day, people bring things that they finish, so I'll put some of those at the end. And then also, um, they also bring charts they're not going to stitch or like linen that they don't want, flosses, whatever. So there's a whole I think we had a couple tables with stuff. So I have a ton of well, not a ton, but a number, number of charts that I'd like to share with you. And um, I was, I was going to wait for 9,000 subscribers, but you know, it, it's such a slow process for me because I'm, I'm such a tiny little channel that I maybe, I don't know, in a couple videos, I'll maybe just share some of those things with you. So you can, you know, enjoy stitching them. And I, I love being able to, when people share things with me, being able to share them with you because I, I kind of look at it like, you know, libraries. 
whatever. So anyways, I guess that's what I have for you today. And um, hopefully I'll get some of this stuff completed, counted, and maybe some of those samplers started. Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. But it's been fun hanging out with you today. And oh, forgot to mention, had, had the last of the fun days with the grandkids. So we officially got all four in separately. And it was funny because took took the well, five-year-old to the um, our local custard stand. And his two older brothers had never been there. So we're sitting there eating our ice cream on the side of the building. And I said, oh, you've never been here. And he's like, no, I've been here. And I'm, you know, don't really want to argue with him. But I'm thinking, well, your brothers hadn't been here. How could you have been here? And then, you know, we keep talking about it. And he's like, no, I've been here. I'm like, okay. And then he's like, when Jen and Jocelyn were in New York, mom brought us. And, and I was laughing because they had to come to our house to pick something up. And then I was talking to my daughter about it. And she's like, oh, yeah, we did stop on that day. So I was stand corrected. But, um, yeah, we, we had, it was a fun day. Got, um, he and I went mini golfing. Then we all went with my husband, we went for lunch, took a little walk, went to our community park. And then the one thing he really wanted to do was play with the iPad. So we did, he did a little of that and then we went for ice cream and then played a little more with the iPad while I made dinner and fed him quick. And then out the door, I had a Zoom call with some stitchy friends. So um made it back for that but as soon as like I was dropping them off all these kids were like kind of converging on their cult sack I'm like what the heck well my daughter had sent out something that um because it was going to be the first day of school the next day for the grade school kids and so she was bringing popsicles out to the cul-de-sac for whoever in the neighborhood wanted to join in so by the time I, you know, went in the house <laughs> with him to when I was leaving, I'm like, oh, where did all these kids come from? But that's what's fun about those neighborhoods where there's lots of young people. I mean, that's how our neighborhood was when we moved in here. And it was a great place to raise a family and um, make lots of memories. Well, all right. Now I've rambled. So <laughs> I gonna end it right here and all I can say is please continue to fill the world with love and I'll see you for those other videos I hope you catch. Bye-bye!